At first sight, this looks like a normal Mercedes S-Stars being parked here at the parking lane in Santa Monica. Oh, did we pay for the parking? We better keep going <laughs> pretty quickly. Well, this one here is a level three autonomous S-Class. It means it can drive itself, but under which conditions and when? We're going to find out here with Thomas and Gefühl. And how special is this one here? What extra equipment do you need? Let's find out. So when you order Mercedes S-Class, you have to buy this optional feature like an you know, expensive sound system for about four or five thousand euros or dollars. And then already some features on the outside are visible. For example here, well, on the left side, you get the normal camera, you know, and then to basically mirror that also visually wise, there is this element on the right side. And here behind, there's the LiDAR sensor. So it's a laser sensor that you need then for the autonomous, autonomous driving. At least that's the Mercedes philosophy. You know, Tesla always goes everything with camera. Mercedes says we need that LiDAR. And here we have a hidden microphone that is actually detecting rain. And that's actually hidden here inside the wheel arch and well, what is that for actually? So at this moment, they don't want to allow the autonomous driving function while raining. And so the microphone just says, ah, are there any like water drop sounds? And then the system shuts off. Of course, this will be changed in, you know, in future long-term perspective. But at this moment, this is how it is. It's funny, right? And then here at the rear, we have this bump. This would look really interesting, right? And this is an additional GPS unit to be even more precise than to know where the car is exactly and then an additional camera at the rear and this camera there is mainly focusing on emergency vehicles or police coming from the rear that you can also make way for them on the interior everything looks kind of similar however look at that these are the special buttons then inside of the steering wheel up there it looks a little bit weird but i think you get used to it so you need to activate these then while driving well, let's try it out. Now we're driving the Mercedes S-Class with the level three autonomous driving features. We're joined by Lucas Bolster. He is a development engineer for the self-driving functions here at Mercedes. And we've picked here the US highways today because this one will probably be one of the major use cases. What is this car capable of at this moment, at this stage? What can it do? Yeah, so when you're on a, a drive pilot ready road, the system will offer you drive pilot availability on the steering wheel and then once engaged will take over the driving task and allow you to engage in secondary activities watching a movie emailing things like this so when is it actually ready or how does the car know which road is suitable for that which are the parameters that need to be met so the car has a high definition map of all of the roads that we've selected um, and then it looks for other conditions to be met. So for example, you're driving under 40 miles per hour, um, you have detectable lane markings, a barrier, and car ahead of you. Once those are true, you get these activation lights, yeah. also in the instrument cluster, yeah. and then you can enable the system with the dedicated button. So left or right? Left or right. Now the system is active, and you could take your hands off the steering wheel, uh, you know, you can play Tetris, the games in the head unit. Why don't you do it? We, <laughs> we could, yeah, we can. Don't you fancy playing Tetris? I mean, you want Tetris? We can, we can play a movie. You uh, can play Tetris when I load the trunk, you know. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if you want to watch about your Mercedes, but you could. Oh, there's the. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, it would be even better to watch uh, Auto Gefühl on YouTube on that, right? Also possible. YouTube is, is yeah yeah uh, it's, it's also available right now. I think I had, uh, had that recently in the um, I think even in the EQE uh, as far as yeah that's the that's the browser. Who search for Merrick Top Gun? Too. <laughs> what the hell? Somebody has different taste than you maybe. Yeah, I mean, how can you search anything else than Autogefühl on YouTube, <laughs> right? Really? So um, um, I mean you um, you have it at the moment restricted to 60 kilometers an hour or 40 miles per hour. Yes. Why is that? I mean, in Germany, that's kind of like the law limit. Yeah. But here in California, you could actually already go like unlimited speed. That would be possible, right? Not for the system. The system was designed together for both markets. Um, and the idea, you know, basically we, we defined the 40 miles per hour, the 60 kilometers per hour for traffic jam speeds, where we're comfortable with doing safe driving. So, I mean, like, just like from the legislation, this 
it would be allowed to drive further if you are able to. That's, yes. that's like basically the 60 kilometers an hour or the, um, the 40 miles per hour is your limit at the moment, right? Yes. You can extend it as soon as you're ready. Yeah, as soon as you, as the system is designed for it and it's been oh, could you shown take to your be hands safe. Off the, the steering wheel, please. You can, yes. <laughs> that, that's new, right? You like, you sit, you know, like maybe next to your spouse and like, hey, honey, could you keep your hands on the steering wheel and concentrate on driving? And this time, like, can you please take your hands off the steering wheel <laughs> to have the demonstration purposes? So there you see, um, like the commands are also quite smooth actually. Yeah, the browser doesn't have the best web connection. That's of course <laughs> over the thing. Don't, don't have too much signal there. Bra we, just uh, roaming from the German server maybe. Yeah, <laughs> man, nah, YouTube is not the German server. So, no, but yeah. the car is German. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. The, oh, it does route and interesting. Hmm. But maybe you can show us Tetris meanwhile. Yeah. You can watch Autogefühl. Well, technically you are watching Autogefühl at this moment. So <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's let's uh, try Tetris. Um, so let, let's say you can drive faster, but at this moment you say that's not safe yet, or how how, how does? It yeah, it it needs to be validated, right? Okay. At every step, we continue to kind of go f further and further, and this is the first step for us with level three, until 40 miles per hour. And at this moment, you can also, um, uh, for example, take out your smartphone, do some emails and stuff. Um, this depends on the, the local law where the system is operating. Is it allowed here? Could you? It's not allowed in it's California. It's not allowed. You can, no. Oh, interesting. But reading newspaper, is that allowed? Only on the head unit. Ah, oh, okay. So nothing... Like, are you allowed to eat a banana? I think so. <laughs> Police officers in California? Is it allowed to eat bananas <laughs> while having level 3 autonomous driving vehicles? I have to say... But psst, I sometimes eat bananas <laughs> in even not level two autonomous cars, in non-autonomous cars, and I eat a banana while driving. Yeah, bust me for that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but of course, I'm, I'm really interested to like, uh, you know, I also see the visualizations here in the screen and so on. The car is accelerating now on its own. What would happen if like the traffic jam is like, you know, is gone? Would it say like, hey, come on? Lucas, exactly. Drive yourself. Or? So when the the leading car gets too far away, yeah, the system will ask me to take over control. With the the lights will change to red, and yes. then we'll get a an audible oh, we, alert. Oh, we, we forgot to ta uh, play Tetris. Even uh, worse Tetris player than I normally am. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my God! Every professional Tetris player will now say, like, "What have you done? I can't watch this." So um, I I, I had first had to figure out the commands. You like a. Uh, Oh my, I played it on the Game Boy, like, you know, back in the days. I was really good at it once, but now I'm, oh my god, I really have to adjust to that. I forgot all about it. Yeah, but that's of course the most important thing about autonomous driving. Uh, uh, oh, now it says take control. Yeah, they're too far it's, away. Ah, okay. My belt gets... Tightened, yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, interesting. And now you are instructed yeah. why. But in, as far as I know, in Germany, the law is that you can use your smartphone, right? In the level 3 autonomous. Yes. Yeah, you, you can, you can, yeah. That's interesting, right? So, um, usually Germany is stricter with everything, right? We are the land of everyone is strict with everything. But in this case, some things are stricter in the US. That's, that's very interesting, right? Um, so, we already have other, you know, market players in that field. So. Now, Tesla has been doing the thing for quite a long time, but most of the time people mistake it because it's still level two and you're still self-responsible for that. But here the thing is, when the car is in that level three mode, you are also taking the liability for that. Yeah, the car is the driver. It's doing the dynamic driving task and your job is just to remain ready to respond to its requests for you to continue driving. So when you are in the level 3 mode and there's an accident, you pay? I, I think it would need to be investigated. You personal. I, you I <laughs> personally. Contact me, yeah. <laughs> Lucas is paying nope. for all the accidents you might ever uh, have in the level 3 autonomous Mercedes S-Class or EQS will be also available in the EQS. Okay, we got that one on. <laughs> but the, the interesting thing was we were talking to their CDO 
this morning and he actually said there is no special insurance fund or something for that. And you might think about like, why is there none of that? Yeah, obviously you don't expect many accidents to happen, right? No. <laughs> Do you expect zero accidents? No. I, I, uh, the goal accidents is right to, yeah. to prevent accidents that are the fault of our driver. Yeah. But we're driving on a, a road in the I-10 in Santa Monica. I see an accident here, right, at least once a, once a day, once a week. Yeah. And it's fully possible that we would be also hit. Yeah, yeah, I see. Um, you do have extra equipment here. We've shown it earlier. Uh, and others say, ah, you know, what the hell? I don't need LiDAR. Hashtag Elon Musk. <laughs> Why would you say, nah, we need the LiDAR? I think the, the big step from level two to level three is about having sufficient redundancy that the system never just turns off. So, right, it's important to us we get an extra set of lane information. So we get lane information from the stereo camera, from the parking cameras, and from the LiDAR. And then we also get objects from it. And it's robust against things that the camera and the radar are not robust against, right? So intense glare, uh, it's really good at detecting small or, or low unclassifiable objects. So if you think about the things you'd see on a, a LA road, like a couch or a dining room chair, uh, the LiDAR is really good at saying, you know, there's a, a light reflection back to my LiDAR. From this, there's an object there. Uh, and allowing it's us. An interesting situation, by the way, that the you know motorcycle just you know crossed on the middle part. That is something that might be unexpected, you know. So uh, especially for for things that come from the rear, you also have that additional rear, rear yeah. camera, right? Yeah. Well, what does it do actually? So yeah, we have camera and radar to the rear. Um, in general, a motorcycle should be allowed to pass, and we are basically trying to suppress any steering activity towards. The motorcycle so if somebody comes from the other side we would suppress turning into their path um, and if they're too close to us we can move over away from them and when there are emergency vehicles from the rear does the car automatically move aside no the, the car basically issues a transition request and notifies you that there's an emergency vehicle nearby so in this case you want to say like hey when emergency vehicles are approaching that should be the task of the driver to really like you know correct yeah take it over yeah. Actually, I mean, I think it's even more useful in, in Germany to use this system because you can use those map. I mean, I mean, this might be like number one thing to, well, two things to do. Checking emails on the smartphone or like what's crap or something. And then number two thing would be eating probably. I know I always say you're not supposed to eat in a vehicle. You should never do that. Drink water, that's it. Because everything else will be spilled at some point somewhere but maybe there are very rare occasions where you need to eat something in the vehicle because there's no time or I don't know there's corona restriction you can't go to a restaurant and you're having your first date and it's raining all over the place and you don't know where to go and want to eat something okay that counts as an excuse okay you know but so eating and reading a smartphone but when this one is even not possible here. What would be? What would you say? What would be the um, number one use case here on, on U.S. roads for this system? Yeah. Well, so we'll have uh, in Play car Tetris. in okay. car office, for example. <laughs> so you could do email through the the head unit. Otherwise, I think watching YouTube, watching you know movies, things like that. But also just being able to to daydream and to you know have a face to face conversation with the person sitting next to you. Um, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to have yeah, a conversation yeah. when you can play on your phone? Yeah, exactly. Who wants to talk to your co-driver <laughs> when you can actually text some random people <laughs> who are messaging app while the car drives itself? Yes, that's a good point, actually. So interesting. So everyone expect deep conversations from now on when our cars are driving themselves. That's a very interesting perspective, indeed, yeah. Thank you for reminding me of, yeah, that's maybe the part of humanity or like uh, human involvement that is missing with, with me, uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, like from an um, uh, like engineering perspective, 
there must have been some obstacles why I mean we haven't seen this one here like 10 years ago so yeah. what were like the main obstacles and how could you overcome them Sure. So I think, you know, one of the big things was having a commercially available LiDAR. So we have a, a third sensor. Uh, also having a, a redundant chassis was a, a big step for us. So we have basically redundant brake and steering actuators in case there's a failure, the car can continue to safely drive. Um, and, and these weren't really possible 10 years ago. Uh, I think for us, it was kind of the natural step after basically having a several years of level two systems available um, taking what we learned there to make it that the car can actually take over the driving task and you know there's also like the you know the, like this other market safe uh, segment of level four self-driving vehicles waymo uber they b basically fit the vehicles for that purpose they also do this pre-mapping um, what is then like the the main difference so why can't you say like hey give me a level 4 s class right now why is it not possible well i think you know this system was designed to go into cars sold and leased to customers so the cost of the overall system is important to keep in mind um but also the the next step of of needing to be able to drive through more situations when you're in level four. So in level three, we, for example, with the police officer behind us, right, that's a situation that we can't maybe totally handle, right? We can stop and, and for sure, but we can't communicate with them. We can't tell them, here's our insurance information. Uh, here's the registration paperwork of the vehicle. Um, and these are something that we would need to handle if we didn't want to have a driver in the car. But you already are working together with law enforcement. Correct. Right? So what are you maybe like giving them trainings and tell them like what to do in, in situations where the car drives itself? It, uh, yeah, so it's a, a two-way street. We're learning from them what they expect from the car and, and we're also sharing with them how to interact with our cars. But is that actually relevant for now already or is it more something that is only relevant when it's level four than when it's like driving really like driverless? I think at least here, right, it's it's not legal, for example, to watch a movie uh, in a level two car, right? Yeah. But if you're a, a California Highway Patrol coming up the lane and you see me watching yeah. Auto Gafool, <laughs> then he's learning quickly. maybe he would, he would think, oh, he's breaking the law. Uh -huh. Right, and so we're telling, okay, if the, the turquoise lights are on, mm. he's allowed to do that. Interesting. So otherwise you have like a police officer like... <laughs> yeah, at all. on the motorcycle. Excuse me, sir, is that a level two or level three car? And then like, like uh, 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 level three, level three. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Pass on further. And if level two, then like, stop it. <laughs> That's interesting. I mean, yeah, it's really hard to tell, you know, and maybe like all the different manufacturers, it's really hard for the law enforcement then to, to differentiate it, you know? So uh, and even more so when it's level, level four, I mean, what what will they do at some stage, you know, when the car is driving itself and say like, hey, is, is, is it kind of like, hey, Mercedes, please pull over. And then it's like, I'm sorry, I can't do this at this moment. <laughs> I mean, how, how, does the, how does the police, Interact like let's imagine like how many how many years then we have level four S class? No idea. Any guess? You any guesses? Four years? Let's say level, level four years for level four. I don't know. Let's take it that way. So how could the police officer approach a self-driving S class? Do you have any plans for that? I mean, in this car. Right, they're instructed that if the doors open, for example, the car won't drive off. Yeah. So that they can ensure, right, even though it's an automated vehicle, that it'll comply with their interests. So when the officer opens the doors and says, police, freeze, <laughs> LAPD, then the car does not flee. True. Interesting. By the way, it's, what, whoa. Yeah, that can also happen. But, uh, you know, when it's like then the level four, is there any scenario you have at Mercedes that you plan, like, I mean, can the police maybe have like a remote stop or how is that planned? Have you any future scenarios for that? I don't, know. 
but that's really something to discuss, right? So what, what would you do as a police officer when the car is driving yourself and you like hit the horn or something and nothing happens, the car is just keeping on driving? Then again, always is, is the question, why would you stop a robot car? Because it exceeds the speed? Maybe. Who do you punish then? Hmm. But I mean, like here now in the level 3 driving mode, I mean, even if we don't have any accident, could we in somehow violate law? The car needs to be designed to comply with all of the vehicle code. So it needs to be able to drive within the limits of the law. I mean, it could see, I mean, for example, when there's like a different speed limit and the car didn't catch that for whatever reason, and then the car is autonomously driving faster than allowed, and there's like maybe a speeding ticket, then you pay for it. Yeah, the compliance, the compliance with the traffic law is also, yeah, exactly my responsibility. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but yeah, the driving task is the cars, so. If the car is breaking the law, which is part of the driving task, this could also be... Interesting. So, I guess the number one reason uh, to go here for the level 3 autonomous driving system in the S-Class is it pays your speeding tickets and it pays for your accidents. <laughs> or it won't get speeding tickets. Or, it or accidents. Get, yeah, that's, I guess, the best case then, right? So, what is actually then to come? This is now, like, the first step. What's the next step? I think the next step is about expanding where the feature is offered and what preconditions are around the feature. So, right, for example, it's only available above four degrees Celsius, not with a wet road or with heavy rain yeah, we or at nighttime. Saw the rain sensor earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's right, it's about making these preconditions less and less restrictive. And once again, I know the, the comments are, are coming when you compare it to the competitors and they still say, and there's, you know, there's a point in that, like, why are you, you know, in relation late in comparison to other, you know, autonomous driving systems? Is it a German thing? Is it a more conservative approach? Is it like to be like really 150% safe or something? Is it that you have maybe like different techniques, different approaches. So what is it maybe also, because that's essentially your work, what is taking longer to make this really like 100% accurate? What's, what, what, what is taking the time? Well, I mean, this is the first approved level three system, right? So it, it's kind of leading the way uh, with regards to offering this responsibility shift in the car, right? So this will be the first car, for example, in Germany with the R157 approval to allow the, the driver to be the fallback ready user and to engage in secondary activities. And the, the reason that's taken a while is, is getting the, the level of safety that's required when you're driving and the car is going to pay the bill for an accident uh, right, they need to be really excellent and, and collision-free, uh, and the development of that takes a long time. So probably the reason is what, you know, by what my CDO Marco Schaefer said this morning, that you do not have this extra insurance fund, that you do not need it. That's why probably um, <laughs> he hired people like you to really be sure that doesn't happen, right? Not to pay individually, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, your boss said, like, when you don't fix this properly here in that vehicle, you're going to pay for this. <laughs> um, here at this moment, you have like additional um, equipment in the vehicle, which will not be in the final version. Um, how do you actually transform that, that, you know, from all this prototype equipment full of the truck and so on, that you get rid of all of this and you make it production ready? What is needed for that? I mean, so everything that that would be in a production drive pilot car was installed here in series, so the steering wheel and the LiDAR and so on. And then all of the additional equipment is for our measurement and data collection as we do validation of drive pilot in the US. Okay, so you do basically uh, like do a lot of kilometers on your own 
to gather experience and later on paper I mean also like from this cloud collect cloud uh, service collecting that you collect from other messages uh, or is it like specific instruments for that needed yes yeah, so the majority of the development is done with our cars doing data collection all around our entire also customer cars or just like specific no, driving uh, specific cars by us and then the system will collect some you know fleet information to learn for example about where construction sites are located uh, from customer cars ah, okay so and that works uh, like just with newer Mercedes vehicles I guess but yeah all new S cars and which, which else EQS EQE uh, and then also with the the generation 4 so with the, the E class and CLS C class so already when you're not having a Thurber 3 car, like one of the newer Mercedes, you are basically helping that stuff like this is possible. That's also interesting perspective, right? I already did a piece on the EQS and I was driving that myself on a test track in Germany. It was also uh, pretty much fun. And of course, if you want to see more here of the S-Class, also driving you know, myself and exterior, interior, all the details about this vehicle, tune in here. Thanks for tuning in and also thanks for the ride. Thank you.